be a funny story go back to, I hope I told you guys this, 2014, and we're playing UConn. We go down there like we normally do on Thursday. So we practice early. So Friday, we end up practicing at Trinity College. Huh. And, you know, he was in prep school at the time and he knew Eric Sachs, but just that whole story and kind of put two and two together after the game, started thinking about it. And we were there and all of a sudden, here's Eric out there kicking field goals for us against Florida State. And his whole goal was to play Division One, you know, Division One football. He played at a really good place, but just a different level. And he was out there, and he operated exactly how he operates in practice. Very smooth, um, really good demeanor. You know, he smiled after every kick. So just to go out there, I think he really, truly enjoyed it. And that was one of the things that I thought helped him in the game, and just that calmness of, I can do this. Um, and he kept us in the game, like I said. So just going back, it was, not anything he didn't do out here in practice. At the same time, the consistency that we had in the kicking game was really important to our success. What uh, What are you seeing from your team this week in terms of uh, you know short week, physical, difficult game, yeah. long travel, all of that? How have you seen them kind of rebound this week? Yeah, they've recovered well. I thought yesterday's practice we were fast, and that was good to see. I think they've they understand <clears throat> the plan just nutritionally and, and trying to you know, take care of themselves and get themselves back and ready to play on a short week. As far as the preparation, now the first game is always the easiest one because you spend the most time on it. Now this week you're into three days of prep. You got to get ready to go. You got to turn it around a little bit quicker. You don't have that extra day to really think about all the details. So we'll find out. I don't know. I think they've handled it well, but we're not going to know until we go out there and play on Friday just how the second game really affects us with the time spent on preparing for Marshall. And that's always the key to me is just what's that going to look like. And you know, our guys doing the work, I think they are, but if they're not studying football at night and they've got class, they've got other things going on, then that puts us behind when we go play. And that will show up on Friday night if it, we didn't do the work. With the way the uh, you know system's set up, you got to be your conference champion for the group of five you know, to have a chance at the end of the year. Marshall's predicted to win their conference and a team that a lot of people see is maybe be a one of those top teams at the end of the year. I mean, do, do you look at it any differently in this game kind of in terms of uh, you know down the road just trying to go up against one of the, a team that you may be competing with for something at the end of the year? Or? Yeah, no, and I haven't. I haven't thought that far ahead. And you know, one thing I've learned over time is to not do that. You know, just what do we got to do this week and really trying to stay focused because I think the natural thing is after one game, people want to look ahead. And the problem is you got to go out there and play. You know, the team you play against is not looking ahead. And if everybody's talking about this is what, you know, could possibly happen, then you get distracted. And in three and a half hours on a Friday night, Saturday, it's too hard to make those corrections at that time to refocus players or coaches if they're thinking about those things. So I don't know. I mean, really, to me, it's, it's about Marshall. We're playing them and getting these guys ready on a short week and thinking about how we're handling it. Are we doing the right things? Are we preparing our guys the right way? Are we spending the right amount of time on the plays that are going to be the ones we have a lot of adjustments? Because again, we got you know, a young quarterback that still there's a lot of different things he's got to prepare for. We got other young players. We got veteran players with the new style that we're going to see. We don't really know this this all or this team very well. It's on a common opponent, so there's a lot of work to get done and just focused on that. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, we talked about Rob and how yeah, he's you know uh, responsibility, all that stuff is really coming to the forefront for him. But um, when you have a guy like that that starts to kind of figure it out, uh, you know, added to his family, all that stuff this off season. How, how excited are you to see like what maybe his potential can be? Because I'm, I'm guessing he's just scratching the surface. Well, we'll see. Yeah, I'm really proud of Rob because of the adversity he's faced and where he is right now. But we, we played one game, and so we'll see. I mean, I think we'll, we'll gauge all that at the end of the year and how that all looks. But he's doing the things week to week now, and he did it from summer through fall camp, and he did it last week preparing for Florida State that he needs to be doing. So we'll see how the consistency shows up, but he's been really good that way. What's the biggest improvement you want to see out of your team this week? Well, there's a lot of things. I think overall consistency and you know, from offense, defense, special teams, all that, the tackling component, the ball security component, the field position battle, those three major things are something that we have to get better at. And that'll be every single game, but we didn't quite do that as well um, throughout the Florida State game. And we get into these games in the future now, that's gonna come back and bite us if we don't do a better job in those areas. So that's what we've been harping on. But as far as just preparation, coaches, players, everybody in those meetings, not just coming out here on the field, but everybody getting themselves ready to go for practice. 
and coming out here and making sure our performance and practice will show up in the game. And if we don't, then I don't think that we're going to be very consistent again, and that's going to come back and hurt us. Every game flow is different, but 108 plays last week. How did that happen, and do you want that to continue to happen? Not really. You know, that wasn't the plan. And I didn't know at the end of the game, I was surprised we had that many plays. Um, but that was not what we talked about, that we're trying to be out there and have 110 plays or be a 90-play team, things like that. We've never even talked about number of plays. I think that's such a, a phony deal with no huddle teams, you know, when guys are doing that. We're going to get this many plays. How about just get the plays that you want to run and go out there and execute them and so they work? Uh, and that was surprising a little bit. If we have that many, I think we showed the conditioning that we can do it. But that's not something that we're trying to go out there and do. We're just trying to execute. And I would say this, we execute, we put drives together, we'll probably be up in those upper range of numbers and plays if we're doing those things. I was talking with, with Chase and Tata this week, and um, in order to kind of help Hank fuel at home, uh, Chase said that he's talked with Hank every day that he's been here. I don't know if you, are you aware of that? And um, how cool is it to see a defensive end go out of his way to make a quarterback go sure. home? No, I'm not aware of exactly that, but I know Chase Atata. Chase would do that for you know any of these guys. That's just what Chase, Chase Atata is that way. He's a leader on this team. And he'll go out of his way to make sure that other guys get what they need. You know, that's one of the things that your veteran players do. And a guy like Chase, that you know, was one of our, our horseshoe club guys, one of our leaders, one of our guys on our team that uh, we look to. Um, you know, that's that's part of what hopefully our guys are all doing. I don't think it's just Chase. I think that's something that I, I hope our team does to try to help other players out. Because as a senior, you realize this is going to be over very quickly, and you hope you can leave something behind uh, an impression to help some of these younger players out for the future. Is there a, when you talk about you know, trying to avoid the, the hangover effect, you know, you kind of mentioned that a little bit sure. fr from, a, from a big game. Is there an example that you, comes to mind when you think about that? Or, what, or also, on the flip side, what can you do to try to tell these guys to not do that? No, I, I, not, not an example of it, but it's the reality of it, right? And there's just so many things that are out of our control that guys can focus on and pay attention to. And you can spend five hours on social media just reading about yourself or you could spend five hours prepping for your next opponent and I guarantee you when it shows up on game day you wish you had those five hours to prepare for your opponent because they get two craps about what you did on social media and, and that's just the reality of it and it's just it's everybody it's not just players it's everybody going back to the focus of what needs to get done what's the task at hand and staying locked into that and I don't care what job you're in, if you start getting distracted by other things, you're not going to do well at your job. And you got to a point, in order to stay there, you have to do more. If you think you just got it and figured it out, and I'll go play the same game, you're going to get beat. And that's the one thing guys have to understand. So that's what I don't know about this team. You know, how committed are they to that process every single week? Because we're only into game two. We're going to find out Friday night. You've been